All right, so this should be enjoyable. We're trying to find uh, a distance formula for two points that are in space, as in three dimensions, x, y, and z. So use the diagram at the left to derive the dis distance formula for points a at x1, y1, z1, and b at x2, y2, z2 in a 3D coordinate system. And I drew, so I drew you a little picture to go along with it. Okay, so my hint on the challenge problems were to use the two right triangles that are in a picture and you use them in a series. You first want to find all of the parts for the blue right triangle, or the purple, whatever that is. Find all of the side lengths of that one and then use those side lengths to complete the one that's in the, the red one. This is supposed to be a check mark. Okay. So let's do that systematically. Now, before we can do that, we need those little endpoints, these little missing points that are right here. I need those coordinates for those two points. So let's see if we can find each of those. Starting with this one down here, which I'm going to call, let's call this point C down here. Okay. So now notice that over here, this side is the x-axis, okay? So anything that stays on the same level as that x-axis is going to have the exact same x-intercept, or x-coordinate. Um, x so it point C's x-coordinate should be x sub 1. Okay? And now, everything back here, this is the y-coordinate. So everything that is on that same level should have the same y-coordinate. So this y-coordinate for point C matches up with whatever y-coordinate is over here. This is not the y-coordinate of point A. It is the y-coordinate of point B right here, which is y sub 2. Okay? All right, my style is freaking out on me. Like Part of it pinched in. Oh, well. Need a new one. Okay, and let me rewind that a little bit and get rid of all those dots. y2. And then finally, this point for the z-coordinate, well, the z is up and down here, and this hasn't moved off of the plane, the xy-coordinate plane, so it must have the exact same z-coordinate as point A. Let me rewind each of those, and that one is z1. Okay, so there are the coordinates of point C. Now let's find the coordinates of this point here, which I will call D. So the coordinates of point D, this one, if I trace this back, yeah, that's a terrible tracing job, trace this back over here, it does not have the same x-coordinate as point A, it has the same x-coordinate as point B. So, its x-coordinate is x sub 2. Right? Now, the y-coordinate, the y-coordinate here, the y-coordinate is, whoops, that's not right, the y-coordinate coming back to this y-axis here, it shares the exact same y-coordinate as the top one, which is y2. And then finally, the z-coordinate, the z-coordinate, well, that point on that red triangle, that point D, let me get rid of some of these marks, um, is still on the xy coordinate plane, so its z coordinate should still be z1. Alright, so now we should have enough information to find lengths of all of these segments. Man, is this video going to be long. Anyway, so let's find the length of AC. From AC, what we're doing is we're moving along the y-axis. I know it's hard for you to imagine that this is the y-axis because it's where the x-axis is usually, but with 3D coordinates we often uh, rotate the axes around so that y is in the back and x is coming out at us. Okay, So it's the y-coordinates that are changing, and so the length of AC is just simply using the ruler postulate the difference of the two y's. So it's y2 minus y1, making the absolute value of that so I can uh, stay positive. Okay, so now I need the length of CD. 
length of CD, now I'm moving along the x-coordinate. So, if I'm moving along the x-coordinate, the only thing that's changing is, well, the x-coordinate. So, from D to C, if I subtract my two x-coordinates, x2 minus x1, then I have that length. So finally, we're just going to use the, the uh, traditional distance formula, or actually just the Pythagorean theorem, in order to find the length of AD. So AD should be equal to the square root of... Now, whenever I square each one of these, I don't need this, the absolute value on them anymore, because squaring makes the number positive. So difference of x is x2 minus x1 squared plus the difference of the y squared and that's a y2 minus y1 squared and that looks just like the regular distance formula and as a matter of fact it is the regular distance formula because it's the one that's taken place on this xy coordinate plane down here which is what we did in class okay so now we're going to extend this into um, into the z-axis, all right? So here, let's switch colors here and let's make this one red. All right, so now on, I have this segment here. I need this length here in order to proceed with finding AB. So to find that length, the only thing that's changing is going up and down on the z-axis. So it's just the difference of the z-coordinates of points B and D. So, oops, the difference of those two points, let me actually just write this one, B, D, should be equal to the absolute value of Z2 minus Z1. Okay, so now I can use this length together with A, D to find the length of this hypotenuse here, B, D. B, A? Yeah, B, A or AB, you know, however you want to say it. So, AB, the length of that segment should be equal to, now I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem, the first one is this length right here, it's this AD squared. So it's AD squared, plus, now I need my BD squared, and that is Z2 minus Z1 squared. Okay, now let me just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to put that expression in for AD squared. But what happens with a square and a square root? They cancel each other out because they're inverses of each other, which leaves us with AB is equal to the square root of X2, not there, X2 minus X1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, so there's ad squared, and then we finally have the bd squared, which is z2 minus c1 squared. And here is the distance formula for two points in space, x, y, and z.